Okay, I'm going to copy the link and then I'll paste it on the group again, uh, just in case we have people that are failing to come back in. But I can see that people are coming back in slowly but surely. I do apologize for that. Um, it's just that we're still using, it's just that we're still using the, um, we're still using that Zoom uh, that needs an upgrade. So, okay. Okay, I can see that people are coming in slowly but surely. So, yeah, we have five people. Uh, let me just post the, the link again. Uh, SBS. Okay, I have just pasted the link. So, but we're going to continue. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the session is being recorded. So, if anybody that um was not able to come back in in time, uh, I'll make these recordings available uh over the weekend, and then I will share the link on the group and um, as previously discussed, the session is being recorded. So I can mute everyone so that we don't have disruptions. So um, in a nutshell, I'm not going to discuss this case in detail. Uh, I will post it for you guys on the uh, on WhatsApp so that you can go ahead and, and, and read this case to a better understanding, but it will all make sense if um if you read all the all, all the cases um that i posted there so mr Stienkamp was old and then um obviously he was working all his life and then he had a will and then in that will he says i would like to leave um all my estate to to my children um or to my daughter and had two children. Oh, sorry, sorry. He didn't say had two children. He said, I would like to leave my estate to my daughter and her living children. So the, the question here was the, the time that Mr. Stienkamp passed away, he, he didn't know that his daughter was pregnant. So what then happened was that when, when Mr. Stienkamp passed away, his daughter was pregnant and then later gave birth to a child. And then um, Mr. Stienkamp's daughter already had two children that um, Mr. Stienkamp was obviously referring to, but because he didn't know that his, two, uh, that his daughter is pregnant, he didn't uh, modify his will. So then the other children or the, the representative of the other children, which obviously was a lawyer at that time, uh, made an argument that this estate will only be uh, beneficial to these two grandchildren that are living, that this other one that was born after Mr. Stienkem died means that he is not going to benefit from Mr. Stienkem's estate. And then the matter went to court and then um, the court said, okay, in a reasonable world, there is no grandfather who will want to exclude, intentionally exclude uh, some of his grandchildren or one of his grandchildren from his estate. In a reasonable world, a grandfather would want to include all the grandchildren. So this lawyer was like, no, uh, he said living children. At the time that Mr. Stienkamp uh, wrote his will or at the time that he died, 
this child was not a living child. This unborn child was not a living child because according to the definition of the fetus, a fetus cannot have rights and duties as long as it's still inside the stomach, it's just a fetus and it doesn't have rights and duties. Therefore, this fetus is not going to benefit. And then the court argued that if, because it is to the benefit of this unborn child. So now it takes us to the, to the requirements of this Nascaturas fiction that as long as it is to the benefit of the unborn child, then this fiction must be applied only if when the fetus is born, it will meet all the requirements or one of the requirements of this, of this fiction. So then the court- uh, Anybody wanna say something? Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, can I please ask that um, you, you mute your microphones at any given time, uh, unless uh, at the time that you would like to say something, even at that time, you can put your hand up so that we can avoid disruptions because when I get those kind of disruptions, I actually uh, lose um, where I was or what I was talking about. So um, it takes us back to the requirements of the Nascaturas fiction. And then the court was like, hey, so we are now going to apply this Nascaturas fiction uh, to the Stian game daughter until that child is born alive, then the child will benefit because it is to the benefit of the child. So um, that is, that's how the, the, the Nascaturas was applied in that particular case and the child obviously later benefited. So as you can see that this application of the, of the fiction is closely related to the law of succession. So um, the, 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 the first time that this, uh, this fiction was applied, it was um, in Roman Dutch law. And um, therefore in South African law, it is very important to know the difference between interstate and testate law of succession. So uh, interstate cessation is simply those rules which apply if a deceased did not leave a legally binding will uh, to determine who will inherit his or her asset. So that is called uh, inter interstate, uh, interstate cessation. So if, um, let's say, uh, so now that we've already started talking about Mr. Stienkem, so if Mr. Stienkem didn't leave a will, I would call that interstate succession. And then if um, somebody, the person, if Mr. Uh, Stienkem died, obviously it's going to be called a tested succession because the deceased left um, a will that is legally binding. So with this application, of the, of the fiction and uh, a benefit in terms of the law of succession, it accrues to the person that is going to benefit on the date um, that the person that left the will dies or from the person, from the, from the moment that they, um, they write their will. So you, you will see that uh, when, in, in most cases, not in most cases, generally. So whenever we're going to use this Nazca Churas fiction, there has to be a benefit. And one of those benefits is uh, a benefit to the, to the unborn child. And one of those benefits will obviously be related to, to, to their inheritance. Um, does anyone have a question? Because I know I've been, I've been talking a lot 
to myself and to you guys are not saying anything. Does anyone has a question or a comment? So um, you can either raise your hand or you can um, type in the chat box if you have any questions or any comment. So um, we were still talking about um, the, the Nazca Churas fiction. So I, I will ask you to go and read um, the, the Mtati case. And then um, you must also read um, that uh, Pinchin uh, versus uh, Sanlam insurance case. So before, um, before the, the, the Mtati case, um, I, I, I wish I had printed that to you for, for you guys, and then we can go through it in detail. Um, you will see when you read that Mtati case, you will understand how um, the, the Nazca Churas fiction worked before and after uh, that particular case. So uh, what, what kind of textbook are you guys using? Is it the, the Robinson textbook? Uh, who is the author of, of the textbook that you guys are using? Does anyone know? Uh, guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, I'm using hear you. The, the Law of Persons second edition by Kruger. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No problem, it's a different one than, um, than the one I have. Okay, uh, so, oh, okay, okay. I saw the Kruger and Skelton, okay. Okay, so um, please, uh, can I ask that you, you, you I, I, will, I will download those cases and then I will um, I will post them for you because it, it will make more sense uh, after you have read those cases in detail. So let's talk about the other measures that um, protect uh, the interest of the unborn child. So there, are, there is uh, two other measures um, that include uh, the common law measures and the statutory me measures. So as soon, uh, according to the common law, as soon as an unconceived or unborn um, child's uh, interests are raised, the court can also appoint a curator. So when we're talking about other measures, uh, I know this is probably not part of your, um, of your assignment. I, I, I've seen the assignment, it's not part of that assignment, but it's something for you guys to know that apart from that fiction, so there is other measures that can be that can be used. Obviously, if if you obviously going to take that matter to court, so there is common law measures and then there is statutory measures. So with regards to the common law measures, when a, at any given time that the interest of the unborn child is raised, and then um, obviously you're going to take it to court, and then a court can appoint a curator. Remember in the beginning we spoke about uh, the types of curators. So the court will protect a curator at this point, that curator is called a curator ad litem. Um, that's also a Latin term. Uh, I'll tell you the definition of that just now. So that curator ad litem is the one that is going to be um, protecting the needs of this unborn child uh, in a specific case or a particular case when that case is open. And then um, we also have uh, statutory measures uh, which exist to protect the successional interest of the unconceived child. So this is, um, this is the same thing as, uh, it, it works more like more like the Nazca Churas fiction as well, because it's also part of the, when uh, let's say for example, there is a will or something like that for them, for the child to, to benefit. Uh, so the curator ad litem 
uh, ad litem, it's, um, that is what they call it. Uh, it means that uh, the court will then appoint somebody who is going to take care of that particular case uh, for the purposes of the law, because that person is not able or is not um, incapacitated enough to understand. Obviously, at this point, we're talking about uh, a fetus who is not even born yet. Obviously, they, they, they wouldn't know how to protect themselves. So the court appoints that particular person who would look at the interest of the unborn child. It does not, it is not only limited to the, um, to the unborn child, it also extends to the, um, uh, it also extends to, 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 to everybody else. So for example, this is just for you to understand uh, who a curator ad litem can protect and when that happens. A curator ad litem can protect um, the interest of the unborn child and they can also be appointed uh, to protect the interest of a mentally ill person or a, a mentally incapacitated person or any person who does not understand the, the legal proceedings uh, in the court of law. Um, I'm not sure whose microphone is on. Uh, please may I ask you to mute it. We are almost done uh, with today's session. So um, if um, I'm not sure when we're going to meet again, uh, but we will talk about um, status and then we will talk about curatorship in more detail, uh, the different kinds of curators. Um, we will also talk about the importance of the concepts in law of persons. And then we will also identify and discuss different capacities. And we're also going to explain the legal position of a curator. And then uh, the cases, I'll upload them for you on the group. Um, you should uh, be able to get them tonight uh, or latest tomorrow. And um, the schedule for next week will be communicated with you guys on the group. Um, is, does anybody has any question before we call it a night or any comment? Anyone? Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. And how are you? Very well, thank you. Yes, I just wanted to ask you about this curator ad chain. So the you are saying litem. this curator ad litem, yes, yes, curator ad litem. Is, um, is it somebody who's being appointed by a court or the state? I, I just want to know if that person is being appointed by the court itself. Yes, yes, the, the curator ad litem is, is somebody who is appointed by the court. So this person is, um, this person is, is, is somebody who, so let's say, let's say for example, um, le, le, let's just use random names. Okay, there is this family, um, the Steenkamp family and, mm -hmm they have a child who is um, an orphan child, let's say who is maybe 10 years old. And then that child has some kind of inheritance that was left to him uh, by his parents. And then now, because that child it does not understand uh, the proceedings of the court, and then the person that left that inheritance for that child said, this child, this inheritance, this child will only be able to access it when he turns, um, when he turns 18, for example, or this inheritance must contribute to this child's education. So what then happens is that at the time uh, when uh, the, the estate of that person is being distributed, 
right? So now, so now mm -hmm. the parents of this child have passed away, and then um, the, the 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 estate is being distributed according to the will of the deceased. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then what will then happen is that so if there is children involved that are going to inherit from there the court will then appoint a neutral person who is not part of the family, mm -hmm. who is a lawyer that they obviously don't even know, that is going to be neutral, uh, uh, working for the court to protect the interest of this child or these children that do not understand how the law works. Even if you explain to them, they don't know. So that person is a representative of the court to protect the interest of the child or any person who doesn't have the capacity uh, the capacity to act at that given time. Uh, does that mm -hmm. answer your okay. question? Yes, I, I am answered, thank you. I was a little bit confused, but now at least I do have a, a light of what Yeah, so, so, so there, is different, there is different types of curators. We're going to talk about these uh, probably in the next session. So there is different types of curators. There's uh, a curator persona, uh, there is a curator bonus, and then there is a curator ad litem. But I just didn't want to um, uh, give you uh, information overload. Um, so the, the, the curator, um, the curator bonus uh, is a person who is um, appointed by the court to manage finances or property or estate of another person who cannot do so, uh, also because of uh, their, their mental incapacities or something like that. But we, we, we will talk about that in detail. So, so the duties of this type of curators they might sound the same, uh, but they are not the same, but we'll go through it in detail uh, when, when I meet you guys again. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question? Okay. Um, if you guys don't have any question or if you don't have any question now, or if it does happen that for any reason you are shy to ask a question, then you can always uh, put the question on the, or you can send it to my WhatsApp direct to me, or you can send it uh, on the group, or you can send, uh, send me an email. I will always uh, respond to you guys. But as you know that I'm studying as well, so I, I might not be able to answer the questions immediately. The only time that I can be able to do it is possibly in the evening. But if there is nothing else, uh, thank you very much, guys, for joining me this evening. I really appreciate your attendance. And then until we meet again, have a good night.